Hey, what's up? It's marketalchemist.camp, where we learn Elixir by building things and sometimes by poking around in the interactive REPL. So today we're going to look at some things that happen all the time in IEX if you're poking around and how they can be frustrating and then how to fix it. So let's look at this article I have. I have uh, uh, many repos, many, many schemas in this app. One of them is article, which is for articles that show up on the site. So if we want to get articles from the database, we can do repo.get and then pass it the name of the schema, which is article, and then which ID number we want, except that repo is not available. That entire module is under the module for my app. The app name is campsite. So we'll have to do campsite.repo.get then article two except that while this article is available inside of its own module, anywhere else we actually need the full path. And that's gonna be campsite.content.article, which is a little bit verbose, a little bit annoying, but we can comply here, campsite.content, which is the name of the context it's in, dot article. All right, we've got our data. And now one of the first things one might do in order to you know, work a little more quickly and just have a more interactive experience is alias some things. So just like you can alias inside of a module, you can also do it in IEX. So we'll alias campsite dot repo like so. And now we don't need to type campsite dot repo to get campsite dot repo dot get. We can just type repo dot get. This alias can actually take a syntax uh, where you have whatever the module name is dot and then a bunch of stuff in a tuple so we can get content and repo together like so now they're both aliased and we can get rid of the campsite dot before the content dot article and then of course we could alias content dot article or we could alias content dot article and dot episode and other kinds of content and now we can write what we tried to write initially. There's only one problem though, and that is when we quit IEX and then start it up again, all of that is gone, and we literally need to replay our own history and get those aliases again so that we can do this query. All right, we've got that query. Now let's say we actually wanna update this information. That's a multi-step process. We'll have to do change set equals ecto dot change set. I don't actually type that out very much, so there may be a typo here. Dot change, and oh, we need the name of the article, or we need uh, to store it in a variable. So we'll call it, say art equals repo dot get article two. So we've got a change set taking the article itself, and then the changes we want to make to it. Let's just change the slug. So the slug is now going to be uh, updated slug, like so. Now we have a change set, and to actually propagate it, we need to call repo again. So repo dot change, or actually just repo dot update cs. And you can see we have our article updated. If we get it again from the database, it's been changed. So that wasn't too bad, but if you're developing the app regularly, you're probably gonna be firing up IEX 100 times a day. So instead of going through that again and again and again and wasting our precious lives, since time is what they're made of, we can create a file that'll do all of this for us. And that is going to be .iex dot exs it's an elixir script file goes in the same directory as your main project and this file is automatically run when you start iex so we can just write those things that we pasted above into the iex dot or the dot iex dot exs so alias campsite dot We'll just get content and repo for now, although my actual one has more. Then we'll get content dot article and episode, like so. 
And then inside our app, we often do something like import ecto dot change set or import ecto dot query. If you look inside article here, we're doing both of those. That actually brings all of the functions that are inside that to the front. So you don't even have to type change set in front of it. You just type change the function that we use directly. And uh, I'm not sure if we're using that specific function here. Looks like we're not, but we've got put change. That's actually been imported from another module. And because Ecto has so many things you use directly and it's kind of a DSL, that's pretty common. Um, one problem though is we can't always try to import things from Ecto in IEX because we might not have Ecto available depending on you know what environment we're running in. So what we're going to do is change this import to import if available uh, like so and that does exactly what it sounds like. It's going to import it if it can and if it can't available there we go if it can't then nothing crashes it all just runs. Let's open up IEX now. And you notice that immediately we can get our article. We didn't have to import anything because it was already done for us from our .iex.exs. But that's not all it can do. Uh, we've also got our ecto.change set imported. So now we could just say CS equals change article slug updated slug. Although let's change it again. Uh, We'll make it a uh, re-updated slug. All right, and then to update it, repo.update, change that, there we go. And we can even define functions in here. So we'll make one that we call easy update, and that's going to take a schema, and it's going to take changes, and it's gonna do the exact thing we just did in the terminal. So schema, and pipe that into ecto.changeset.changes. So we should be able to just say change, ecto.changeset.change, I should say. And it's going to change with the changes and then repo.update. And that should be sufficient. Let's give this a try. Oh, it's gotta be inside a module, okay. So we'll just do def module AC for Alchemist Camp. And then down here, we'll close it. And since we've got it in a module, just change this to update and restart our IEX. Undefined function change, and that's because we haven't imported it into this module. We've just imported it to, uh, just imported it in a script. So we'll do ecto change set dot change save that give it another try and we've got another typo add the s there let's fire up iex again and try all of this out so first of all let's look at our episodes so episodes are just going to be repo dot all episode you can see I've got quite a bit of junk data in there. Our first episode is called episode one. Let's see if we can get it by that slug. So we'll do app one equals repo dot get by episode and slug is app dash one. Excellent, we've got it. Now ac dot update app one and let's change that slug to first since it's the first episode and it's done so you can see how much quicker this has gotten to do these basic tasks without having to load everything in all the time and of course we can make lots of helper functions like these and now i'm going to paste in some more from my uh from my own files my projects so this is uh, this is what I use in the campsite project. 
Then I've also got some other things that I've put in all of my or all of my projects generally, uh, which you can do by just putting a .iex .exs at the root of your path directory. So uh, whatever that is, say it's slash home slash your username, just put one of these there and you can have general stuff that's available everywhere. You can also do stuff like configure IEX. You can change the colors of things. You can change, uh, you know, based on uh, what type of uh, item it is, number, atom, string, boolean, or nil, uh, directories, all kinds of stuff. You can even change the default prompt. Uh, you've only got uh, 16 colors to pick from from, from this, so uh, you'll have to Google a little bit, see what the eight default ASCII colors are, and then each of them uh, with light underscore prepended to it is also an option, making a total of 16. Um, you can paste Unicode in here and uh, do a lot of stuff. So uh, .iex .exs is pretty extensible. You can customize it. I would try to avoid going too crazy on this because I just wasted a bit of time on it, uh, a bit more time than is rational at all. But this is what it looks like now. So we've got all of those utilities, all those helpful things you saw before, and my prompt is is a green beaker. And if I happen to have, you know, some object with uh, a value that's true, well, true is going to be colored blue, and the braces are going to be yellow. So if you're new to it, check out .iex.exs, and if you've already got one of those files, just post a comment and let me know what you put in yours. See you next time.